Christmas and the gifts by Ohidaraman. Celebrations are of various kinds depending on occasions both ritualistic and social. If we look into Christianity, the most significant one is the occasion of Merry Christmas on the 25th of December every year. Not just it is celebrated in a befitting manner all over the world. A lot of stories have also been acknowledged famous. The most outstanding and well-known story is by a Henry entitled The Gift of the Magi. There we see the parsimony of Della while buying stuffs in order to save some money by pennies, still it was too little to buy a fob chain for her husband, Jim's golden wristwatch without which he cannot tie round his wrist. On the other side, Jim is extremely anxious to buy a comb for her panoramic, rippling, cascading and excessively long hair, both had no alternative but to sell Della's hair for buying the chain and Jim's watch to buy the comb. Alas, they are of no use, as she sold her hair and he sold his watch. But in reality, this zero value of their gifts became cent per cent valuable, valuable enough to make the people call Jim and Della, the Magi meaning the wisest. Let's review one of the episodes of an extremely popular comic serial Mr. Bean. Alas, he lives utterly alone no one from anywhere he has, who will wish him Merry Christmas, nor there anyone who he can wish Merry Christmas, however, he has to wish himself Merry Christmas, no alternative. Now Mr. Bin set his alarm to wake him up well before the midnight for celebrating Merry Christmas, the machine did not betray, he woke up and celebrated Merry Christmas alone and went back to bed again, to make fun with Mr. Bean. Someone set his clock one hour ahead wickedly, it is natural that the clock running ahead did not come to his notice. To his dismay he woke up again by the sounds of the celebrations by the other people, and it was not difficult for him to realize the unexpected fact. Let's talk about another comic serial Perfect Strangers where a Latin American used to stay together with his cousin in the USA. It can also teach a great lesson regarding the value of gifts which is ordinary to the ordinary minds and extraordinary to the extraordinary minds and hearts. Their relationship was too cemented to let the other stay away even while dating, they used to go to bed together, have meals together, etc. No matter whatever they are doing but doing together except sharing bathroom. On the Christmas Eve, the USA friend brought out the big and spectacular cassette player which connotes the love for the cousin come friend. The recipient realized it properly and expressed his happiness. Then comes the turn of the Latin American friend. He slowly opened the package and gave it to him. It was a quilt. And it was beautiful, though it was cheap. It sounds ridiculous but still the recipient thanked and eulogized for the present. He also asked how he got it. The answer was almost as follows, Dear friend, I have made it myself for you. Every night we go to bed together but when you've fallen asleep, I leave the bed slyly and sew a little every night. And that's how I made it for you as Christmas gift. This gift is invaluable for those who can realize the real value of it but valueless for those who are after glossy and silky threads. The mechanical modern world mostly forgets to care any cheap gifts and expects only the expensive ones as though the costlier the gift is the better it is for sure, no matter how beautiful it is or how much it shows the love for the person. Where there is a real love, a rose may be the best gift or a love note on a tiny paper may turn to be the most expected. Even the words expressed with proper emotion or sympathy must have a soothing effect which touches the hearts. Another regrettable fact relating to gifts is that many invitees feel bothered if they are invited, only because they have to undergo trouble for buying gifts for the occasions. It is even heard that the expensive gifts already bought have been returned to the shop for exchange with cheaper ones or it is kept for another occasion when they will be served with more expensive foods as anticipated. What else also happens is that the invitees do not render their gifts if they have failed to attend the ceremony, they also calculate the prices for the gifts according to the probable status of the arrangements. The term cost effective is well applicable here. In most urban areas the invitees buy gifts, attend the ceremony timely and seek an opportunity to occupy seats for the lunch or the dinner as if the gifts are the tickets for their special meals no matter whether they have visited or seen the bride or the bridegroom for whom they were invited. The meal is over, so is the occasion interestingly. The competitions among the invitees are not uncommon here, 
they prefer a florid style of their dresses and gifts in order to be socially more acknowledged and prioritized. There lies the difference between the real love or feeling and the fake love or the mock feeling.